Can you imagine if Schwarzenegger had been Han Solo? Like, Chewy, punch it, go! <laughs> and I think it's amazing that it took you going on Google to figure out that the script was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I'm going to intro the hell out of this. Broadcasting live from inside the power band. This is The Blah. In this episode, everybody dies. I'm your host, The Wolverine, along with Jar Higo and C-Lab Forever, a.k.a. Algorithm. Gentlemen, how are you? Yo, man, how you doing? Hey, Mori. Great. <laughs> uh, cheesy openings are my favorite. I know, I love it. So this week on The Blah, folks, we are talking about, what year was this movie made? It's timeless, I think. <laughs> okay, mm, okay, I like yes. it. 1990 Timeless. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> this week on The Blah, folks, we'll be uh, sitting around the campfire and talking about the <laughs> 1990 Timeless classic, Demolition Man. The title of this episode, Demolicious. Demolicious, colon, 1990 <laughs> Timeless. <laughs> Demolicious <laughs> colon 1990 timeless. Where shall we start in this uh, paella of a film? <laughs> so many things to talk about. It's the best use of the word paella. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. You know, it's a, it's a melange of uh, wonderful film things, and uh, I've got lots to say, <laughs> lots of notes. Where do we start? I don't even know. I think I think one of the first things that I would I would like to throw out there is that this is possibly the most 1990s movie I've seen in a long time. I can't think of many other like movies that are more 1990s. I agree 110%. Yeah, I was just going to say um it's the second 90s movie I can think of that contains Rob Snyder in an action film. What was the other one? Oh my god, yes. What is the other one? <laughs> Uh, the Judge Dredd movie. Ooh. Oh, my God. Also with Stallone. Good call. Yeah, wow. I didn't even think about that. Mm. And there you have it, folks. Right out of the gate, Jar Higo drops a neutron bomb. I think Rob Snyder is like a time traveler that only went to the 90s just for that 10-year period. And then he never existed before wow. or after. <laughs> I think he I think he did. You're right. Seriously, man. He seriously must have. You know, I think um I'll, let me I'm going to start it off with this because you guys are sort of touching on it already. Like one of my notes was like this this movie it's really confused about what it is and what it wants to be. Totally. In my opinion. I mean, I could very easily sit here and say that like, this is just an absolutely awful film. And in many ways, it is. <laughs> when it came out in the 90s, I was, you know, I was pretty, pretty stoked for it, you know. But that was a long time ago in a galaxy far away. And now, like, as I was watching it, it it's so confused about what it wants to be. It's like, they're they're so utterly casual in this film and the absolute worst parts <laughs> where they shouldn't be casual like it's you know it's like it's like this mix of you know comedy i guess if you could say that with really hyper violence man and <laughs> the hyper violence is treated with that uh they started doing this in the 90s where it that that casualness about hyper violence, you know, and it it just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it works so poorly that it kind of works, <laughs> and yet it does exactly, it's, Chad. And yet yeah. it works so well. Like it's ugh, like God. another example I, I, that jumped out at me that I completely forgot about was um, the fact that si uh, what's his name, fucking Blade. Wesley Snipes. Yes. The, the thing that jumped out at me was Wesley Snipes' characters named Simon Phoenix, and they use Simon Says all the time. And I was like, oh, God, I completely oh God. forgot about that. And it's so unbelievably stupid. Yeah, no, stupid. I did too. And yet, like, so dumb. kind of fits too. <laughs> like, dude, he's dressed like a the fourth member of TLC, and he's going to start singing Waterfalls, you know? Like, it's just, oh like, my so God. perfect. Wow. 
<laughs> that was a great name drop, Chad, and I like how you tied that into an earlier hatred comment about TLC from another episode. Well done. True. You know, you gotta weave the threads, man. Hey, man, you get no argument from Mulvey. Yeah, he has. Well, we we'll get to him because there's plenty to say about <laughs> the character of Simon Phoenix Be- before he went to jail for real life for tax evasion, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly for tax evasion, but you know. The the, fu- the film is just, I think it's just confused about what it wants to be. Like, I mean, there's parts where, like, literally, like, ten people are getting machine gunned down, you know? And, and the actors are so casual, even with the funny lines, you know? Like, they're, they're, it straddles the line between casual and phoning it in in the most huge way, you know? And... You know, because there's there's always a joke after there's hyper violence, like when Phoenix guns down the staff in the cryo center at the end. Like, you know, he's just super casual about it, and and he's dropping these jokes that, I mean, certainly today aren't funny, but it's just it's so casual, it's disturbing. You know what I mean? Totally. I reckon, I reckon that like there's a decent like we'll get to it in more detail, but there's a decent chance that. Uh, Dennis Leary jumped into the writing room towards the end of the of the drafts of scripts and, and oh my god took the no piss a bit doubt with that about it I love the Dennis yeah. Leary the, one of the things that makes it so nineties is Dennis Leary Rob Schneider or whatever and Dennis Leary like Dennis fucking no doubt. Leary doing a monologue okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like oh my god yeah he I got I have a little special section in my notes for Dennis Leary but it's not long oh, but when you um when you mentioned that the movie seemed out of sorts or like didn't know what it was what it what it wanted to be it made me think of um how i used to love this movie because it was played on you know tv every 10 minutes with commercials or whatever and back in the day you couldn't really google it and find out a bunch of smart people's opinions on it or a bunch of like interesting facts about it because it was right at the cusp of like when the internet really started taking off. So, you know, I watched it last week or whatever for the first time in 15 years and then immediately just Googled it. And one of the things that I had never heard about was the fact that the script was a complete piece of shit and like they rewrote it and halfway through and they blew it over budget and like all this weird stuff like how um, how Sandra Bullock uh, was meant to be his daughter and all this crazy shit, you know, so... I did hear that, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I saw like it, where like an early draft was he was she was meant to be his daughter, and then they just like abandoned it and simplified everything and stuff. So like I completely agree that the movie has no idea where it's going. But up until last week when I read the article about it, like explaining why exactly it didn't know where it was going, it was just kind of like a hmm, whatever funny movie. Let's watch it back in the day kind of thing. Definitely, and I think it's amazing that it took you going on Google to figure out that the script was a piece of shit. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean it like that, but I meant why it was a piece of shit. You know what I mean. I'm totally kidding, dude. I get it. You're right. I did hear that thing about her being the daughter. I heard that a while ago, and I, I probably heard it from you, but yeah, I none of that comes as a surprise to me. Like It's clearly over budget, like... It's it's just everything in it is so utterly over the top. Like the casualness of the hyper violence, the hyper violence itself, the comedy, quote unquote, if you can call it that, it certainly does not hold up. Uh, which was one of my my uh, notations was this this movie does not hold up. Like there's movies that we we can talk about, have talked about from the 90s, from the 80s, whatever that are still classics today that are still amazing films that look great. This is not one of those films. In fact, I don't even know if I should be using the word film when I'm referring <laughs> to this movie. Wow. <laughs> I like Jar Higo's <laughs> response. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ben, I know you've got some interesting things grinding around in your head. Let's hear them, man. Come on. Uh, well, I, I think my takeaway is I'm pretty sure that I figured out what the three seashells are. Yeah? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and that's the most of it. Because when I originally watched this film, you know, back in 1990 forever when it came out, um, 
you know, I saw it and it just like it didn't even register. <laughs> I I couldn't tell you anything about it for the longest time until I watched it like two or three weeks ago or whatever. And already it's mostly gone from my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to file it. I, I laughed a lot, but it was it was like the, you know it's it's like laughing at an old episode of Star Trek or something. You know, it's 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 laughter because it's just you know campy. It's not necessarily supposed to be funny. It's just so bad it's funny. Yeah, it's it's not even campy. You laughed a lot, but the whole time you had my makeup on and one single tear dripping down your face. <laughs> yes, yes, that that's it right there. It's super campy. It goes beyond camp. I think camp is actually better than this because camp is a quality. They tried to sell me Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> well, camp is like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Camp like sort of knows that it's not serious, but this movie was like. Yeah, like a Rocky Horror or something. Yeah, right. Like these, this movie was like, they were really like into this. But do you think, do you really think that they were like. Like, that's maybe what's so 90s about it is because people actually thought that that was serious in the 90s. But do you really think that they were serious? Oh, man. I mean, how could you not be? What is it? I, I think they were trying to be serious. Yeah, I, I agree with Higo. Like, I, how could you not be? I mean, look at this film. It's so bad. Like, they, they must have been trying to be serious, you know, or, or a be, being, having been taken, taking it. Jesus, I can't speak. They must have been taking it seriously. There's no other explanation for the the quality, and that if that's if that's serious in the '90s, then now I know why the '90s was so fucked up. <laughs> I mean, the '90s produced some great films. Again, this is not in that pantheon of great films. <laughs> well, maybe you know, like, please argue the point. But off the top of my head, the good films from the '90s tended to be that shift to indie. Yeah, you know, like sure. Um, yeah, you're, uh... And so, like, this is, like, maybe one of the better examples of what the mainstream industry thought of as a serious blockbuster, whereas the actual popular movies, you know, like a Pulp Fiction or whatever, was yes. an, a more of an indie film. And, like, Pulp Fiction is just as ridiculous in terms of, like, calling back to other films and other references and hyper violence and hyper ridiculousness, but like totally man. clearly handled better. Well I mean take a take a look at Terminator Two. That came out around the time this film came out, pro- probably within a couple of years and like you can watch Terminator Two tonight and it's still awesome. Dude, Terminator Two is a solid ten times better. Solid ten times. Oh my God, man. That truly is timeless. Like yeah. it's so well done, you know. It's like if you go back and watch the original um, Time Machine by H.G. Wells, they turned it into a film. When you watch that, it is so ahead of its time, and it's so good for the level of technology that they had that it absolutely holds up. I watched that a number of years ago, and I was really impressed and really blown away at how well done it was. Again, this this film is not in that list. <laughs> no, totally. Well, short short aside, uh, speaking of Terminator, I randomly stumbled upon Ar- Arnie posting in Reddit maybe ten days ago with the latest trailer for the new uh, the new Terminator that has Sarah Connor oh, coming God. back and stuff. Pretty stoked Dude, for it. To why be fair. is there? Hmm. Why is there another Terminator movie coming out? Like, I mean. The the one that just came out was not good, and yeah, but I think I that know. like similar to like the Aliens franchise, you know, half of them are good movies and half of them are complete pieces of shit, and some of the more recent attempts to go back are like, okay, let's make a new Terminator, Aliens, Predator, whatever, but let's go back to what made the original good and skip all the dumb shit. And so, like, if they go that same route with it, might be might be interesting. I mean, they've got Arnie and. Um, the lady that plays Sarah Connor. What was her name again? Um, Linda <clears throat> something. Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton. You know what you should do, Chad? Go back and listen to the Captain Marvel episode we did, and I did a little a little treatise on how they came up with, uh, you know, Captain Marvel, and what you just said is <laughs> exactly like how I said it. 
No, it was like a bunch of a bunch of writers. They were like, "Okay, so remember all of that that happened in that last film, in that last storyline? Okay, forget that. That no longer happened. <laughs> now this is the real deal." That's what you sounded like right there. <laughs> like, you know, it's not, I don't know, whatever. It's a popular thing to do these days. Fair enough. But alas, folks at home, this story is not about the new Terminator film. This story is about Demolition Man. Could it be about the new Terminator film? <laughs> <laughs> This movie is so bad, folks. Jadar Higo already wants to digress completely and talk about the new Terminator film. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we should. I think we should do a live uh, <clears throat> teleplay uh, based on what we think the new Terminator movie is going to be about. Ooh, I like that. You guys, you know there there is some good Arnie impressions in the uh, in the uh, in the arsenal here. Benny does a good oh, one. Oh boy, Kev, you probably do a good one too. I do I do one all the time, man. I don't know if it's uh something I'm gonna do right here for the folks at home. I just, just whether it feels right or not. It'll, it'll it'll happen. I actually learned my my Arnie from I learned my Arnie from Mulvey. So you know Oh wow. Yeah. I mean I kinda had one, but but hearing yours being in proximity, that sort of solidified mine. Perfect. Not, not that I have a great one, but um it's good enough to make people laugh at work. And no, stuff, it's good. Man. It's definitely good. Yeah, totally, man. I, I don't, uh, I'm really honored by that, Jarhigo. Indeed. I, the latest thing I've gotten into is this whole chewy thing. Like we came up, Ben and I started talking one day about how if Schwarzenegger had been Han Solo, because <laughs> I started saying chewy. I started saying chewy with an Arnold voice and I really enjoyed it. So I kept doing it. And then I said that to Ben. I was like, can you imagine if Schwarzenegger had been Han Solo, like sitting in the cockpit with a gun slung over his shoulder and a like a, a stained wife beater with like a cigar and he's flying the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> like that would be, that would be pretty funny. And what would he say, man? You can't leave me hanging like that. Uh, I can. I can, and I will. I'm not going to leave you hanging, Chad. You son of a bitch. He, no, dude. He punch it, Chewy. <laughs> chewy, punch it. Go. And then, and then, like, so, like, my son was getting into, like, the heavy-duty, like, chewing and drooling stage, you know, as babies go through. Mm-hmm. And I got, I got, I took that. And then one day I was like, I was like, damn, dude, we got to get you a chewy or a cold chewy. And then I just started going chewy. We're going to call you chewy because you're chewing everything all the time. (laughs) (laughs) We call you little chewy, Uh, mini chewy. So why don't we, why don't we jump back to the task at hand here? No. Uh, Where did we leave off in this monstrosity of a film? We were comparing it to Terminator in some way. Where were we? <laughs> comparing it in the sense that it was like, yeah, so Dennis Man sucked. Anyways, Terminator. Yes, yes, yes. Well, considering that, you know, <clears throat> uh, Terminator 2 came out around the same time, it's mm. obviously a much better film. <laughs> much better. Absolutely. I think as we were mentioning, it being the most 90s film of the 90s, is that a bold statement? I think it is the most 90s film of the 90s. What's the more 90s film than this? It doesn't have to be a good film I'm, to be a 90s film. Too, I'm too tired to even... My my memory banks are not uh, serving me well right now. I could not think of a, a film. Good content. Can you give me some uh, parameters for uh, what... Sure, a film made in know. the 90s. Yeah, right, yes, but, <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> Can you be more vague? You know, nineties nineties-ness for, for I think like that, you know, I that. think nineties-ness is like hemp necklaces and like really baggy jeans and everyone, you know, buying their stupid clueless clothes from shitty catalog like Delia's catalogs and like you know <laughs> fucking posters all over their walls and doing lots of hard drugs and what else? I mean Drinking shitty Zinfandel? What's more nineties than nineties? I think like the like the like TLC is a good example, you know, like people wear their fucking jeans backwards and stuff, you know, like oh my god, yeah. It was a weird 10 years, man. Yeah. It was a weird 10 years. 
That was a weird 10 years. That The jeans thing, that was weird. Like Polly Shore, all that kind of shit. Like some of the MTV stuff we touched on in the other episode. Like some fucking yeah. weird, that's a weird decade, man. Yeah. And that's when people started like wearing their jeans hanging off their ass literally. Yeah. Which still pervades today for some strange reason. Giant books of CDs and or the sun visor in their car with a little CD thing on it. Like, oh, God. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Yeah. Like, that's fucking 90s. Absolutely. The shit where you like that is got so a weird 90s. catalog and had to pick 10 CDs and you get them for free. And then they'd like charge your parents every month for the rest of eternity. And your dad would get <laughs> mad at you. And like, you'd be like, I got them for a penny. There's just some weird shit back then. You mean Columbia House, Chad? Yeah, Columbia House, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the 90s was a very sort of subjective decade. Like It was. There was so much of a mishmash of shit going on. I think it really depended on like where you were and what your point of view and what your perspective was, you know, of just what was going on around you. Agreed. And how old you were, too. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, I, I might have been like, oh, well, yeah, around then, like, I was listening to fucking, I don't know, Soundgarden and... <laughs> yeah, the grungy stuff. You know, yeah, I had long hair and I was wearing flannels and like cut off fatigue. So with... you you were basically Captain Marvel. To- totally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah, me too. I had long hair and a horrible, horrible facial hair situation going on, and you know, it was bad. Yeah, there were goatees. You know, it's torn up Henleys. Attempts at goatees. Henleys. <laughs> there yeah. was some Attempts prepubescent goatees. goatees. <laughs> it's kind of it's like... Um, not pubescent. You, know, you, wore, not pre-pubescent. you wore this stuff that was kind of beat up, and it was kind of like what ended up being in the Matrix when they're on the ships. That's where they got the inspiration from, was right. how we dressed in the 90s. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like wearing, uh, wearing you know... Uh, <laughs> Wearing long johns under your cutoff camo fatigues. <laughs> yep, yep. With with uh, you know combat combat boots and you know like a wife beater under a flannel. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't the new like high tech fabric long johns. It was the old like square checker pattern. Oh no, yeah, shitty long. Johns. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the and they with, were like like, stains. like they weren't like super bleach white white. They were like off-white but it just made them look like they were dirty yeah yeah (laughs) yes yeah Yeah. they look kind of like really bad eggnog yes yeah did look like bad eggnog so so ben take all that throw it into a blender and then answer the original question from five minutes ago (laughs) (laughs) is there a better 90s movie a more Uh, 90s movie you know it it might be it it might be You might be right, man. Some something intuitive inside of me is saying that you're right. Although I can't I can't quite put my finger on why. I mean, you could argue for like an Encino man, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Or a clueless. Hmm. Clueless is very nineties, but I mean, without going into like a whole thing, I think like I, I agree with Ben. Like there is definitely something about this movie that is so nineties. I think clueless is also very 90s it sort of embodies the the decade very well and uh-huh. and friend of the show paul rudd looks exactly the same now as he did then he's just as immortal as keanu that's true and jet lee and donnie yen yeah i thought you were saying jet lee and donnie yen were in clueless and i was like i clearly missed a deleted scene man <laughs> dude you uh, haven't seen the version of clueless that i've seen dude if jet lee and donnie yen were in <laughs> clueless it would have been more 90s than demolition man that would have been fucking amazing like oh a food God, fight turns man. into like a yen whooping yes. fight scene well think about they have a fight scene in hero that is like one of the best fight scenes ever <laughs> just cut that into the middle in the of clueless like without any context yeah exactly man <laughs> exactly <laughs> there you go done it's a done okay. deal well that that fan um, edit is is more 90s than demolition man but as far as original productions are concerned demolition man's pretty 90s dude i think that and clueless yeah are, are really 90s yeah. films yeah. you were saying that you don't think the comedy did you say you didn't think the comedy was good or didn't hold up because i thought the comedy in this was kind of genius like as it was trying to be it was trying to be vanilla and innocent you know with like 
you really licked his ass and all that kind of stuff. But it like I just I just thought it was really funny. Wait, Chad, when you say Chad, when you say you, are you referring to me or Jarhigo? Yeah, I thought I thought you mentioned earlier that the comedy didn't <laughs> sit well with you. No, what I said was that it just it doesn't hold up. Like it's it's just I mean it's it's funny in the sense that it's so bad, but like I mean it's it's just it's awful. I mean, some of these one liners are just ridiculous. I mean, Arnold, you know, has had some puns in some of his eighties films that are just classics. And these are like trying too hard and they just don't hold up. Like I wrote some of them down. Uh two two of my oh, my highlighted ones were uh Phoenix and okay, so <clears throat> here's the setup. Phoenix and Spartan are driving in the police car, which they are also destroying as they go down the road. Stallone is halfway out the car, and he's trying to push his head down onto the pavement. And somehow he's driving the car at the same time. And they're having a conversation. They're not yelling at each other or swearing at each other. (laughs) They're talking about what happened back in 1996 because, you know... The beginning of the film takes place in 1996, and I, I I don't remember the year that this thing came out. Do we establish that? Is it what was it? 1990 timeless. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we, we shall not divulge the actual year. <laughs> if if the film came out in 1995, like the beginning of the film, <laughs> the the picture of of one year later <laughs> is so bleak it's ridiculous. But they're talking about 1996 and what happened. And Phoenix admits that he never killed those people as Spartan claims. They were already dead. And he says, quote, cold as Hagen does. <laughs> I missed that Ooh. one. That's amazing. Ooh, and I was like, yeah. wow. Yep. Really well written. <laughs> They dug deep for that uh, another one. one of, yeah, another one of my favorites was um. So Sp- later on, at the end of this sequence, right? So Spartan finally like throws him out of the car, gets in, tries to drive. The car's not working right. You know, whatever. He ends up flying through the police station while yelling. I might add, and. When he lands, like the safety mechanism in the car goes off, and, and the safety mechanism is to fill the entire car with this foam shaving that cream. hardens up like instantly. Yeah, shaving cream that hardens up instantly <clears throat> and protects the occupant of the vehicle. So he the the car finally lands, and then of course Sandra Bullock comes running out of nowhere. I don't know where she was, uh, riding a bike, following him. Maybe <laughs> he kicks the door open. <laughs> And he and he jumps out and he's like, "Hey, what the hell happened?" He's like, "All of a sudden, the car turns into a cannoli." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm quoting that word for word. I'm quoting that word for word. What the hell it's, happened? But it's it's somehow funnier listening to you quote it. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Well, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm always happy to entertain, especially the you, the two of you. <laughs> but that one right there, I was just like, "Oh my god." Those are so some, some brutal lines, man. I'll give you that. I'll give you that for sure. Yeah, those are brutal. I'm trying to let me just see. Let me just check and see if I got another one here. Because I loved, uh, I really liked Sandra Bullock's random misspeakings. I thought that it really fit well with her character. Yeah, but like, like they were just so like. I mean, I don't know if it's because I'm watching it now and I've watched a wealth of films between the release of this film in in the '90s and now which is probably the case, but like, I mean, these like one liners and her whole, like that was one of my notes, like her whole fish out of water thing, even though he's the fish out of water, everybody's trying to be like Spartan because he's so cool and retro. <clears throat> right. So, so she keeps trying to drop these nineties sayings. I mean, because she's a nineties historian in her spare time. <laughs> I mean, this is what this is what the movie is, right? Yep. She's yep. a historian about the nineties. It's a hobby in her spare time. And so, like, you know, at the at the end there, uh, I believe it's before the final battle between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, 
uh, she goes, <laughs> Chief, you can take this job and shovel it. You know, and then she gets in the GTO and there's a moment they take a beat and Stallone's sitting there looking straight forward and he goes, take this job and shove it. <laughs> and it's like, just. And she just like shrugs and winks. dude. Yeah, exactly. And she's just I like, liked whatever. that though, man. I feel like yeah. she carried this movie, man. I really liked it. I It's horrible and terrible and I should, you know go turn the car on in my garage and sit there for a couple of hours, but I liked it. <laughs> well, maybe you should do that anyway, Chad, but You're I will not say alone, this. Though. It's one of those movies. It's like, if you are having any thoughts like that, people, seek help, please. So we're joking. Yeah, call our hotline. Yeah, it's 1-800-555-5534. We're available 24 hours a day. Um, so to that point, though, I want to bring up something that I think is interesting, taking a little bit of a deeper dive here. Is that was what you said, Chad, about how she carries the film? Because this movie is actually populated with a lot of really, really good actors, like Dan Cortez. Um, no, Dan Cortez is not in this film. Yes, he is. He plays the the Jolly Green Giant piano song during the Taco Bell scene. Oh my God! Are you kidding oh. me? That was Dan Cortez. It was Dan Cortez's film debut. Jarhigo, can you corroborate this? Uh, I cannot corroborate it. I, I can look it up for you. I can. Would you like me to Google that for you? <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, well, okay, fine. I cannot. I cannot corroborate at this time. We'll get our intern. What was the intern's name again? Jerry or some shit? It's, uh, it's Jimmy or Timmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy, of course. Hey, it's Jimmy. Jimmy the intern. So, so... Well, to, to finish what I was saying, like this movie's populated with some really, really good actors, like Bob Gunton, okay, who plays the who? chief of police. And oh Bob yeah, I Gunton, love him. We all know Bob Gunton played Warden Warren Norton in the Shawshank Redemption. Oh yeah, Shawshank and he was amazing, and he is amazing. He's one of my favorite actors, and you know, so there's a lot of great actors like him in this movie you know and and some of the the periphery actors like you know benjamin bratt is a very underrated actor he's really good and he's another ageless timeless dude because he was in dr strange and he doesn't look like he's aged like maybe about five years since this movie so you know stick that one in that pile dr strange like the marvel mcu movie yes dude the mcu what was he in that he played the guy that had two uh, a broken back and non it, he was paralyzed from the waist down and he was walking around playing basketball and he was the one that told strange about camertage no fucking way that's amazing well that's just the kind of loser i am but in any way um <laughs> i appreciate that com- compliment the um i can confirm dan cortez in demolition man by the way thank you very much jimmy you did okay confirmed all right fine Dan Cortez is in demolition man he's not one of the actors i'm referring to unfortunately chad but um just- as the Taco Bell entertainer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben just said it. As Taco Bell entertainer. <laughs> um, but this but the movie okay, so so I'm playing to to what you're saying, Chad, about, you know, so you say Sandy Bullock carried this movie. And you can say what you want about her as an actress. I think she's there's some movies that she's done that have been really, really, really good and some others that were like whatever, but um, there's there are really good actors in this movie, and they are really trying hard to play the whole idea of living in this future world, you know, with this completely different society. And they are doing it, and they're playing it straight, and it and they make it work for a good portion of the film. I think what derails it is the rest of the film, but. They do do a really solid job. Like you can tell they're they're putting in the work to sell that to everybody. That this is this future society where, you know, everything is very different how we eat and the morality and all of that and it's much more peaceful and all of that. Like at least in the beginning before we get into the whole Edgar friendly thing. Um but they they do. They really they really sell that and they really work hard at it. And like that's that also ties into my comment about this film is com- confused about what it wants to be because if you took that concept 
and you sort of remade the film, but did it differently. Like it would work in a cool way. I think, you know, does that any of that make sense? It does. But like, I kind of feel like if it was darker, it wouldn't, I like that it's lighthearted. I think that's one of the things I like about it. No, I get what you're saying, Chad. I'm just saying you could remake it and, and use that concept and it would be, I don't know what, but mm. there, there, ha- there, I feel like if you could adjust the sliders a little bit in that movie and kind of come to a, yeah, some somewhat better of a compromise than the ultimate end product that you know we see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you, Ben. I think you're you're adjusting the sliders is the best way to say it. That's a good way to put it because for sure. it's the, the the mix of the comedy and the seriousness. Like you can. You know, you've got some really good dramatic actors in there and they're really, you know, they're working that material and they're selling it, that whole concept and that whole idea of living in that future. And and they're even playing the comedy straight and it's working, you know, to a large degree. And then again, the film just derails itself with uh, all the utter nonsense. <laughs> There's plenty of that. Yeah, yeah. It, with cold as Hagen does. Speaking of Speaking of sliders, like... The society is almost as if like Hitler and Walt Disney had a bit of a mind meld, you know, like it's like the most vanilla adventure park or whatever Disney World style society. But the dude who's in charge is not really a Walt Disney. He's more like eugenics, Hitlery. You know, it's it's kind of a ridiculous two opposite sides of the spectrum. Disney branded fascism merged together. Yeah, like fascist Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. And the comedy kind of plays off that, like Sandra Bullock. You know, like, I love the like the dude comes up to Simon Phoenix in the in the museum. And he's like, "Hello, sir. What seems to be the boggle?" And you're just like, "The what?" Right, but the but that's what I'm saying. The actors are on board with it. So, so the film, it's like that again. You come back to that confusion of like you know, is it's like at times it's like they're it's serious and they're playing it serious and then like the comedy comes in and just like sort of destroys the whole thing or the ridiculous hyper violence and over the top action comes in and just sort of destroys that as well or takes it takes it you know takes its legs out so to speak yeah that's fair it doesn't thread it just like it's like whiplash between the extremes and never really hmm. like you were saying Benny the sliders if they both if they dialed them in a little bit more it would have been a bit more of a balanced film sure but then then it might have been like even worse. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm not a filmmaker, so it seems like they could have come to some compromise, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. Clearly, they were not able to. That could shift what you were what we were saying about like the the film being in balance and out of balance and all over the place. I feel like the Edgar Edgar friendly kind of subplot him being the bad guy thing is a huge part of the film and it's worth figuring out wh- whether it fits or doesn't fit in terms of that whiplash and that whether it makes the film like Dennis Leary. I think like I'm glad he was left in the nineties. The guy's a fucking knucklehead and it was just <laughs> a weird, it was such a weird thing to see him there. Like it kind of is great in the movie because of how stupid the nineties were and how stupid this movie is and how it makes it delightful in a way. But that guy's a fucking jackass. All right, well, all right. That being said, though, if I can just say about Leary for a second, I agree. Like in the 90s, he was, you know, kind of all over the place, but like he stuck with his acting and he, he matured quite a bit as an actor. He was actually in The Amazing Spider Man 2, I believe. He played the police chief, the, the father of, uh, I, yeah, I think Gwen yeah, Stacy, yeah. he did a good job and he's been in like some TV shows and stuff where he's done a good job and he can, he can play some, he can play serious stuff. Well, don't you think Ben? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't he in a, like a TV show on the, <clears throat> some fireman one, wasn't he? <laughs> right. Yeah. He was a fireman. Yeah. I was going to say in the nineties and I was like, no, I don't know. Was it in the nineties? I can't remember. No, but, no, yeah. no. More, more recent way, than down that. the road. Way more recent than that. I don't have an issue with him as an actor. I just have an issue with him as a comedian. I loved, I loved his comedy CD when I was a kid. Before I knew any better, before I knew he stole all of uh, Bill, whatever his name is, his comedy. But oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've 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 heard about this, and I didn't I didn't know about that until 
recently myself. Were you talking about Bill Hicks? Bill Hicks, Bill Hicks yeah, yeah. stuff. He just like lifted yeah. lifted a lot of Bill Hicks's comedy after Bill Hicks died. Dude, that's not right. Bill Hicks is a legend. Let's be real here. But again, um, that's like you know anecdotal. I haven't really dug into it and whether it's legit or not. But just like that was it 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 has informed my opinion of of Dennis Leary's you know early career. And I could be full of shit and completely reading like you know an article that isn't true or or based on knowledge that isn't true. But like as an actor, I'm sure he has done some good stuff. It's just like it was such a funny choice. Like it was such a '90s choice where they're like sitting around a table, being like, "Hey, who should we have as the bad guy?" And the guy's like, "Fucking Dennis Leary, dude. Have you heard his comedy CD? We'll give him like a minute long dialogue about eating food. It'll be hilarious." You're like, "Okay, <laughs> I'll t- I'll take I'll take what you're saying a step further, Chad. Because what I was gonna say about Leary was this is a classic example of, and this is what they used to do." certainly in the nineties is, you know, they're like, Hey, or who's hot right now? Oh, Dennis Leary. Yeah. Let's get him in this movie. Get That's exactly how that went down. Oh, absolutely. And they totally capitalized on his hotness at the time and his shtick and style of delivering the comedy with like the fast talking, you know, I want to have, I want high cholesterol. I want to eat big greasy burgers and then shit my brains out like that, that sort of thing. He says that something like that in the movie. Like, yeah. Yep. You know, that that's how that went down. And like it was such a, a classic example of like who's hot right now. Let's take that person and shoehorn them in this movie. And the, the cool thing about Leary, I mean, if you're really paying attention to the film, like he, he takes it seriously. And like he does have those couple of lines that are definitely 100 percent him and his style of comedy and all that. But like the rest of it, like he's really doing he it. Does like, he's it. He does go for it. Yeah. The part. Yeah, he totally goes for it, and he and he does a pretty good job of it too. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I just I just saw my other note. It was one of the one liners from the film, again delivered by Wesley Snipes, and this is when he kills Cocteau at the end. He goes, "Boys, throw another log on the fire," <laughs> and two of his his flunkies. Heave uh, Cocteau's body into the gigantic fireplace. I was like, "Wow, okay." It's, <laughs> it's pretty silly. It was yeah. jarring. Can we can we acknowledge uh, while we're in this ridiculous Beetlejuice fireplace room? Can we acknowledge the Beetlejuice uh, art dealer as the uh, yes kimono wearing assistant? And how much I love that uh, casting. All right, the fact that neither of you said. Otho, which is his name. Otho, yes. Is you should both be banished. Sorry, sorry. Well, it's not the actor's name. I, I, I don't. You know what? I don't actually know the actor's name because he's been Otho to me since Beetlejuice. He changed his name to Otho, <laughs> and yeah, he, he legally changed it to Otho. Exactly. I was gonna say like you know because. Because I was watching the film and I was like, you know, this was happening and that was happening. And then and then he he enters in the first scene and I was like, and then Otho walks in. That's what I said in my <laughs> mind. I was like, and then Otho walks in. Perfect. <laughs> I love that actor. He was so oh, good in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is a pretty 90s film. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. He was also really funny in Multiplicity, too. He had a small part. Whatever. Which one was Multiplicity um, again? It was the one where Michael Keaton plays a contractor and they're doing work at a cloning facility and he gets himself cloned and then he gets himself he ends up getting himself cloned three times. It's really good. It's really good. Nobody saw it. Yeah, that was funny as shit. And then like the fifth clone's really dumb. Yeah, that was a good one. Steve. Clone of a clone. A clone of a clone. Number four. Can we can we touch on something that confused the hell out of me in my rewatching of this movie? Sure, yeah. Yeah, go for it. So we're watching the movie, or I'm, well, we're not together watching the movie. I was watching the movie, and it's such a boring and predictable, maybe that's a not bad way to put it. It's such a forgettable movie. Yes. And yet, you remember everything as soon as you see it again. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And the uh, the Taco oh, Bell, yeah, yeah. like, yes. I would yeah. like to take you to Taco Bell. And in the in the recording that I watched, the re-recording that I watched that a, that fell off the back of a truck, drops Pizza Hut in, and I was so horrified and confused and upset and betrayed that I immediately paused the 
completely legal copy of the movie that I was watching and looked it up. Right. And it turns out they changed it to be Pizza Hut in Europe because there wasn't any Taco Bell. And I think it's a travesty and they should be ashamed of themselves. What? It is. And if, if I can just add to that, because that's also the version I saw. And in the ADR, it, the very like when that whole sequence starts and they start with all the ADR of Pizza Hut over Taco Bell, like you can clearly see St- Stallone saying Taco Bell and, it, and Pizza Hut <laughs> comes out of his mouth is what you hear. And it's like, yeah, no, you're not. It's as bad as cold as Hagen does. <laughs> Dude, I loved, I loved the, the drop, the Taco Bell drop back in the day. I think that was hilarious. No, it was hilarious. All restaurants are Taco was Bell, John of- Spartan. Everybody was sort of horrified by the prospect of that. Yeah, it was amazing. So that that offended me deeply, and yeah, I'm forever hurt. Double wrapped gorditas, extreme. <laughs> I think I, I think for me, like, just to jump back to the the whole '90s thing again for a second, like one thing that makes the, the '90s the '90s is how with advertising everything became extreme. I think that was the birth of everything being extreme, like extreme Mountain Dew and, and Doritos and Mountain Dew and Taco Bell were the like the and Sunny D. They were really pushing the whole extreme thing. You know, Sunny it was like D. Taco Sunny Bell D was, was they too, were like doing, screaming in the refrigerator. They were doing ex- extreme gorditas. You know, <laughs> Doritos was doing extreme nacho cheese Doritos. You know, dude, Sunny D. What are you talking about? No, Sunny D has had one commercial, period. Same one. Kids open the fridge. Hey, what do you got? Purple Milk, drink, purple stuff. Purple stuff. Soda. Hey, Sunny D. That's Sunny D right there. And the mom, it like cuts to the mom who's like, yeah, I'm a good mom. And it cuts back. Yeah, to she's the over in the corner with her arms <laughs> crossed, nodding like, yep, nailed it again. Nailed it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got the apron on and she's got her arms crossed. Yeah, totally. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nail- I nailed it again. God damn it. I get an A. She's going, I get an A in parenting today. What? Dude, when I um when I was living in San Francisco, a pizza a pizza chain like I wanted to order pizza. So I I, I don't know, opened up the yellow pages because this is like pre-internet and looked up the nearest pizza place to me and it was called Extreme Pizza and it must have been a pizza place that was created in the late 90s. I called them up to order pizza. And, Hello, welcome to Extreme Pizza. How may I provide you with extreme service? And it was just like, dude, I want a fucking pizza. Like, what What, what just happened? <laughs> it's ex- a perfect example of the extreme 90s. Are you serious? Is that what, did that actually happen? Or did you just make that up? I swear to God, that happened. That's like legit, like how they were instructed to answer the phone. Wow. That is wow. taking that to an extreme. Pun intended. It's extremely extreme severe abuse of service workers mm. <laughs> it's, it's terrible Can you imagine having to say that when you answer a phone every time i'll oh, provide you with extreme service <laughs> i just want a goddamn pizza yeah. sir <laughs> <Hey. Woo-hoo. laughs> yeah exactly it's like a professor frank office space office space 90s or 90s Oh, come on. Totally, dude. That's a good 90s movie. Definitely. So I don't have a hell of a lot else to say on Demolition Man, <laughs> except for like <laughs> the joy, joy way about blah, 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 blah. Like, no. I, I, this is exactly what I wanted. I did not want to drag this on for like three hours. I'm like, I'm ready. There's to nothing else to up, say, but... man. Well, I want to I wanna talk about, for a couple minutes... Uh, Movies that are so bad, they're good. The idea of so bad, it's good. I think that's worth touching on. Let's touch on that. I think Demolition Man, for me, is so bad, it's good. But it's pretty fucking bad. And with that said, I can't figure out whether movies from the past, uh, especially from the 90s, like what makes a movie so bad, it's good. Versus it just being so bad that you have nostalgia for it. Like, does it need to be seen by somebody fresh and they'd be like, oh, actually, that is pretty good? Here's my answer. My answer is it's it's sort of walking a, a pretty tight line of being over the top. It's not too much over the top, but it's enough over the top 
and also the element of not taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. I think that's what makes a movie so bad it's good. And I'm really I'm thinking about Roadhouse while I'm while I'm saying that because Roadhouse is it's an awesome movie. And I say yeah. it's an awesome movie because I love it. And I can tell you like a million reasons why, but like as a movie, like it's terrible. I mean, it's like the dialogue is awful, the acting is <laughs> questionable, but it's still awesome. And and that's one of those movies. It's like it's it, I wouldn't say that one is so bad it's good. I would think it's just great, but it's because it's like kind of terrible. It's like a B movie. You know? This movie's in another it, it's this movie's so bad it's good, but there's different reasonings going on there, you know. I mean, Roadhouse yeah, is easily a cult classic. I mean, let's be real. Yeah, Roadhouse is. I hate to generalize here, but yeah, it is one of those things that's just, it's dependent on the movie and it's dependent on the person watching the movie. Or even your mood when because, watching it, yeah. Or your mood when watching it, for sure. But I mean, you know, if you're the type of person who, you know, like uh, there was a period of time in the 90s when I just loved getting stoned and watching shitty movies. Totally. And I would just laugh my, I would just laugh my ass off, you know? How bad it was, and how terrible the acting was, and how preposterous the plot was, and you know the or the action or the special effects, whatever you know, what have you? Like I just I, I reveled in that for a period of time. Totally. Um, yeah. I, I so I think that's a it's a pretty broad topic. The so bad it's good thing. I mean, I might even put like um, I mean, and this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Big Trouble in Little China might be. Oh a man, movie that's so yeah. bad it's good. You know, yeah. it's definitely it's definitely over the top. There's definitely some questionable action, special effects, and you know, acting, and you know, the plot line's pretty goofy, and you know, but um, something about it like just worked. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's right it's right in that same vein as Roadhouse. You know. Mm. But like another example for me of so bad it's good is Biodome. Like that is a terrible movie. I wouldn't say that Roadhouse or Big Trouble in Little China are as bad as Biodome, but I would I would call Biodome <laughs> so bad it's good. Like Biodome's a yeah. fucking terrible movie, but for some reason it I is. Just but love I have it. no, I have watched it recently because of that exact reason. I was like, oh, dude, I gotta watch this. It's so stupid. Yeah, it's so dumb, but I love. You know what it. I mean, like you, you, it's like it's like those movies. You know, this is of course back before streaming. You know. Uh, in the real world, like every time you'd turn on the TV or turn on HBO, it was like that movie was on and you'd be like, ah, yeah. why not? <laughs> you yeah. You're like, all right. Hey, old buddy, come on. You can come in for one more visit, you know, and you'd watch it again, you know, and then you'd watch You'd have watched it a million times, you know, you hang out with Billy that or Baldwin. you had it on VHS and you slapped that thing in there. No, it wasn't Billy Baldwin, dude. It was Stephen Baldwin. Oh, let's hang out with Stephen Baldwin. Yeah, so so I, I agree with you about Biodome, and I agree with Jar Higo about Big Trouble. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, you could say sort of say the same thing about the Karate Kid. You know, the Karate Kid is yeah. a good movie. You know, well, actually, no, forget that. Sure, yeah, that might be that might be because Chad was talking about nostalgia. That might be a nostalgia sure. thing too, though. You know, yeah, 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 that's true, You're right. Because it's dated, yeah. There might be some nostalgia at work there. Like I don't know. Well, yeah, if, no. I think I think you're right, Ben. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't I, I don't I don't know if I. Uh, God, I don't know. I haven't watched it in a long time, <laughs> and I, I don't know how it would resonate with like people today. You know, like not that there's anything, not that there's like special effects that are bad or anything like that. It's just right. Yeah, I don't know. But today, you could just introduce people to Will Smith's kids version. And it's much, yeah. No, that that's that oh, that God. version's good, but like, no, it's just I not as seen good. It. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> and and I I think what I think what Ben said is right. Like, the thing about Karate Kid is that it's because of the style of filmmaking and the style of the acting of the time and just the time period, like what people said, what people wore. Mm -hmm. That nostalgia factor is what makes it bad if you could say it's bad but it's not really bad it's just period it's period specific you know what i mean like it's that's how movies were made in the 80s and it's yeah it's actually well, a very it's, it's also what it's also kind of what makes it good too though 
<laughs> well, yeah, and it's yeah. it's actually a serious film. It's like you know, it's a coming of age story about you know, a kid da 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 moves from the wrong side of the tracks to a new town, blah 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 blah. You know, whatever, man. It's kind of like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why i said that uh, jesus all right so um when karate kid's a better star wars movie than star wars oh man you just said something huge right there boy all right i've got Definitely. i've got three questions for you i need I, okay and then can we also ra- we also have to rank this film like give it a rating go ahead oh jesus okay um i need to get your opinions on three films, whether they're so bad, they're good or not. Go. Well, it's not three films, but like three examples that I'm curious your opinions on. Cause I can't decide, I guess is a better way to put that. Adam Sandler movies. Are they so bad? It's good. Or are they so bad? They're just fucking bad. Depends on the movie. Early Adam Sandler. First couple of them. No. What are the other two questions? Then I'll answer all three. Uh, virtuosity. Is that a good movie? For its time, is it a so bad it's a good movie? Because I like that movie. Third question. And then the third one is what about spoof movies like Robin Hood Men in Tights or Hot Shots or, you know, because there's good examples and bad examples of spoof movies. Is that different than a so bad it's good movie? Ben, you want to take this first? Okay. Um, I'm not, I haven't seen Virtuosity, so I, I'm sorry. Um, you should be ashamed of yourself. And <laughs> I'm really going to have to punish myself and watch it. <laughs> but um <laughs> in in uh in reference to the the sort of parody movies i i don't know some of them are great some of them are shitty but i don't know if they fall into the same category because um i think i think at heart they are made in a way that's you know they're, they're camply done and satirically done uh in that parody way where there is some badness there to it but it's it's there to i guess enhance the comedy I don't know. You know, I mean, Mm. it's like its own genre. Yeah. It's its own thing. I think, you know, I mean, like I I love space balls, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Austin Powers, Blazing Saddles. There's plenty. I don't know if I'd say those movies are bad, you know, if they are, it's because they're doing it on purpose. In which case, can you really call it bad? Yeah. Right. But if you, if you're hitting the target, then that's a different thing than like trying for something and totally missing. Like, like, uh, you know, Demolition Man did. And I just died right there. You're dead. <laughs> that was your death? You, di- you died because you talk shit about the greatness that is Demolition Man. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I wow. did. Wow. Well, it was the, it was heavy, the com- again, the complete silence at the end <laughs> of my statement. Like, no one had, it was like, yeah, mm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh. or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just like, well, to, uh, to be fair, I Ben, I was I didn't comment on purpose because I was gonna sort of res- like comment on what you said in my response. Sure, sure. Sorry. Well, you know, just to, just to would it kill you guys? Would it kill you guys? Or just be like, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It yeah. would actually. <laughs> you know what, Jarhigo? It wouldn't, uh, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn me! Damn me all to hell! I'm sorry. You're welcome. All right, I want to hear your Sandler answer, dude. Go. Uh, I, <clears throat> All right, go ahead, Kev. No, it's early Adam Sandler, man, for you. No, no, you didn't comment on the Sandlers, Sandler movies. Oh, Sandler movies. Like Happy oh. Gilmore and whatever. The ones that are considered good, not the, like, I'm a fucking random barber from Israel one. Uh, Zohan. Oh, if I may, <laughs> if I may, Jarhigo's response right there pretty much summed it up for me. He goes, oh, the Sandler movie's right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I uh th- I think there was a time where I found the early Sandler movies really funny, but then they just became so quotable and like sort of overdone and overplayed and that sort of like fed up like there was like a feedback loop going on, I think, with Sandler movies <laughs> and then you know, it went from being like pretty funny at first to like, eh, I don't know, it's okay, I guess, and then like Zohan, you know. Um, so <clears throat> that, that I guess that's where I'd put that. But uh, are they so bad they're good? They might be, or are they just bad? Or, or they might just be bad. I don't. I can't. I can't put my finger on those. Fair. That's totally fair. That's kind of where I am. I think they're just bad. Yeah, I would have to. I would have to watch one and see if I 
actually laugh at it or if I don't, you know, see if it holds up at all. But I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't make you do that. I couldn't make you waste that hour and a half. Yeah, no, no, please, please don't do that to me. <laughs> that says it all right there. Right? I think that that does. I think that answers the question. That does say it all. That really <laughs> says it all. <laughs> Mulvey, where are you at? Um, Sandler, Virtuosity, and Spoof movies. And what movies? Spoof, like Robin Hood Men and Tice. Spoof. Or Let me start Powers. with spoofs because I, I agree with Ben. It's like you're sometimes in those spoof movies, they're spoofing how bad some of the movies they're spoofing are. So to say it's so bad it's good, it's like that's like a quantum anomaly, dude. You can't you can't compute that with any algorithmic sort of situation. Some of those movies are better than others. End of story. They're in their own genre, and many of them, even the ones that aren't that great, they're timeless. Like, you can't, you know, it's like Spaceballs, man. Like, it's. I love Spaceballs. It's still funny. I mean, Men in Tights, Hot Shots, part one and two. They're just great. That's all I'm really going to say about that. Um, Virtuosity. Hot Shots and Hot Shots, duh. Part D. I knew you were, I knew you were gonna do that. And you were right to, to reprimand me, Ben. Sorry. Fair. Hot shots and hot shots part D. You know, the best part of one I can't remember which hot shots film it is, is when they're traveling down the river on the boat a la Rambo and they pass another PT boat and it's got Martin Sheen on it and they're reenacting that bit from Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse now. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. That's awesome. You know, so like oh, in that God. in that way, they're, they're timeless. They're, they're 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 they made a whole scene out of that. Like and combined two movies and made it great. Um. Anyway, moving on. Virtuosity. What about Naked Gun movies? Oh, those they were great. good, man. I love Naked Gun. Great. Frank Drebin, the first one especially, so good. First one especially, the, the jokes are just great. You know, they know how to do it right. They're playing it straight the whole time, and it just works great. Yeah. Dude, Naked Gun is one of the best. I totally agree with you, man. Naked Gun is up there with like Airplane as like one of the better silly comedies ever. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to Virtuosity. Um, Virtuosity is a good science fiction film. I think believe that was the uh, American debut of Russell Crowe. Um, I think you're right. And I remember seeing him and being like, who is this weird guy I've never seen before? You know, and of course he like turned out to be amazing. And then um, it has Denzel. I mean, come on, dude. It also has Kelly Lynch at who is just even still at Uber Babe. And, uh, you know, she was in Roadhouse. She's a good actress. She was in a lot of great movies. Um, I think Virtuosity is a good movie. And I like the concept of it for sure. Like the concept was solid, man. Like, I mean, you could say some of the execution was bad. I mean, granted, I haven't seen that film in a long time, but um, that's a solid science fiction film. Definitely. I, I think it it sort of gets lost in the shuffle even. And uh, it kind of... It got lost in my shuffle because I'm looking at the... Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at it now. I'm like, oh, right. Denzel Washington, Russell Crowe. It's right up your alley, Benny. Yep. Pretty sure I've seen this movie before, but I can't for the what that one's worth a re- that this one is worth a rewatch in my opinion. It is, and I I could I could not tell you one thing about it. I know I've seen it, but yeah, I'm gonna re I'm gonna rewatch it. It definitely got lost in the shuffle. But I also think that it's um, I I think it probably I I feel like it came out around the time of some other films that were just like blowing up in a huge way, and it sort of got like you know lost in the background for some reason. But at any rate. I think that is a good movie and I want to rewatch it and I will report back to you the next time after I watch it. Mm. What about original Arnie total recall kind of has a similar quality level to virtuosity in terms of like the effects and stuff being a little dated maybe, but I obviously love the original total recall, but is that a so bad it's good movie or is that just a good movie? No. No, that's a great movie. I think it's a good it's movie. It's a great adaptation. It's a great adaptation of a of a Philip K. Dick story. Number one, number two, um, Paul Verhoeven, his style of filmmaking that he does, I think it fit great in that story. 
uh, with like, you know, the hyper violence and all that. And I mean, you know, of course you've got like your Arnold puns and all that and they're great, but like underneath that, there's a really great story and it's really played well by some really good actors, man, including Schwarzenegger, who you can say what you want about him, but I've seen him do some really great movies and I've seen him do some stuff that was just ridiculous, you know? So, um, in my mind, Total Recall, the original is the bar and the new one that came out with Colin Farrell just it, it's just not that good it doesn't hold up no it sucks miss the target totally it, it just doesn't grab you as well it did miss the target i mean the best things about that movie are in my opinion brian cranston and kate beckinsale and jessica beale in the same film <laughs> sorry yeah sure <laughs> it's true it you missed know? the target if 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 you know if someone was shooting an arrow at a target, it missed the target. Like they pulled the the arrow back and then they let go and the arrow just kind of like fell off and just fell on the ground. Like they, it didn't even fucking get going. <laughs> uh, it was like a, it was like a Wiley coyote situation yeah. where like, you know, some Wiley, coyote, Wiley yeah. coyote ended up getting shot instead of the arrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Yeah. I mean, here's, here's the best thing that, that the, the new total recall had going for it. It had it had the the new Total Recall had going for it like a nice feel of like a Blade Runner esque world. They did a good job with that, like the set, mm. and so the backdrop is really good. But beyond that, like I just don't think it's very good. And I think the original is really where it's at. And the original's got so many great actors in it. I would have rather they just like had an sh- hour and a half of them walking around the empty set. It would have been a better fucking movie. <laughs> Okay, you've made your feelings clear, Chad. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so can I finish my my Sandler question and then yeah, let's yeah, move please. on and rank these films and wrap this up. So so in my, here's what I think about Adam Sandler. There are a handful of Adam Sandler movies, and they are. And there's there may be one or two more that I'm mentioning, but these are the ones I'm going to mention. Click is funny and at times sort of really poignant um if you haven't seen it i that definitely went under a lot of people's radar but i think clicks pretty funny sucker punch is a total straight drama movie that he did that is really good and yeah but we're not we're not talking about those sandler movies we're talking about like happy no, gilmore you, the question you know the question production. was adam sandler movies so okay I, that's how I took the question. So this is how I'm answering. Uh, does, it. Is that what you did? You mean Sucker, Sucker Punch? Because I mean that's a great movie, Chad. Uh, did you did you mean that movie, or were you talking about like? I am curious how Kev interpreted it. That's not how I meant it, but I want to hear Kev's interpretation of it because it's interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Fair enough. All right. My son is now in the room, and he just started crying. I'm going to have to deal with him in a second. So fair enough. So my answer to the question is this: Click Sucker Punch. Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, but not even really Billy Madison, like the whole way. Those are the only sad Adam Sandler movies there are to me. Like Madison and Happy Gilmore are funny. I still watch Happy Gilmore all the time. And then Sucker Punch is like just something totally off the beaten path for him that I think is great. And I think Click is funny too. Does Grandma's Boy count as a Sandler movie? Grandma's Boy? Is he in that? He's not in it, but it, it is a. It is his production company. It is kind of like that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense on the Adam Sandler thing. I think I think what it really clears up for me, especially in regards to the spoof movies, is spoof movies is a genre of movies, whereas any genre of movie can be so bad it's good. And that definitely like helps solidify what makes a movie so bad it's good versus a spoof movie, which... Seems like it should be in the same ballpark, but they're completely different. So that makes total sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't... I mean, just to sort of quickly kind of address something that Jarhigo said when I started talking about Adam Sandler, if we were just talking about the, you know, his production company movies, the comedy movies, there's only two. It's Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. And Billy Madison is... I mean, Happy Gilmore is solid solidly funny and it it's not just full of juvenile humor like it's really good yeah Mm -hmm. so that's my answer to that um guys why don't we rank these let's rank this film benny why don't you go first i'm gonna look up a quick link 
Um, well, it does have some redeeming qualities. And it is kind of so bad it's good. Um, you know, it does have a great sort of... Uh, I love I love the the capper one liner in in these old movies. You know, like um, you know Arnold Schwarzenegger throws a fucking pipe right through Bennett at the end of Commando, and he's like, "Let off some steam, Bennett." You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this one, exactly. Stallone is like hanging from a chain, and he's flying. He's got both of his feet out. <laughs> and that's, and, I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, Phoenix is like frozen he's like heads up <laughs> <laughs> i forgot about that one so bad so bad just drop kicks his head right off um it's, uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna say uh 4.5 yeah that's wow. that's yeah yeah that's pretty good i'm uh I, I, i'm not i'm not uh i'm not far off a of jar Higo. this this movie is it's a lot of things like it's dreadful and it's unfunny and it's funny. And there's some insane action sequences. And when I, when I take all of that stuff and I throw it into a blender that makes it so bad, it's good. And so I'm going to go ahead and rank it a five straight up in the middle, five straight up and down, straight up and down five, bro. Five by five. I like it. It it lost a a half a point because of Rob Schneider (laughs) in my book. (laughs) I love that. Fair enough. I I actually think that in I was just gonna say, Ben, it's funny you say that because I was just gonna say that Otho brought mine up to a five. (laughs) Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't enough to negate the Rob Schneider, so I had to had to deduct the half point. Yeah. I might need to give it extra points for Dan Cortez then. Hey man, I respect it. I respect that. <laughs> uh. All right, so so currently the bottom of my algorithm is Tropic Thunder. And my algorithm is weird because I haven't chosen to rank every movie I've ever seen. It's just movies that I consider like half decent and up. That's where your algorithm breaks down. It's where the algorithm. It just like it's kind of like a repeating number. It repeats to infinity. Some some movie has to be the worst. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's it fair. might be a movie that you like too, which is crazy. So the bottom few, the bottom five on my list of movies that I have ranked, Kevin, you'll be pleased to know, is five from the bottom, Winter Soldier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, Dark World, then Ready Player One, then Prometheus, then Tropic Thunder. Wow. So it's a quite a quite a pie of films right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think Right. Mm, Demolition Man better than Age of Ultron? Probably. Oof. Oh, actually, I've got it on my list. I take that back. Holy shit. <laughs> I, need to, I need to drastically revisit my rankings because it's currently in the same area as Groundhog Day, Overboard, Falling Down, and Basketball Diaries. That is a little bit overestimated, I think. Yeah, maybe. That's yeah. off, dude. So the current it's it's current ranking on my algorithm is a six point four. I think I need to revise that and uh, call an audible and place it in the three point seven. Let's call it three point eight for Dan Cortez. Fair enough. I just I would like to point out quickly. I I do appreciate your score, but I want to remind you both that your algorithm broke in the uh, episode about nothing. That's true. When all of that quantum weirdness happened with Keanu Reeves. So it's currently broken. So that's what the problem is. Scoring John Wick. We need, I've, I watched both of John Wicks and we need to talk about it in, our, in an upcoming episode because I have thoughts, man. I have motherfucking thoughts. <laughs> Fair enough, dude. The third one's in the theater right now. Uh, yeah, th- there was some beef. There was some beef there that night. There is still some fucking there beef. There's some, some beef. Kobe motherfucking beef. <laughs> wow. Kobe. Is it is it America's is beef? It well marbled. 
There is some fucking marbling on this goddamn beef. <laughs> is it well marbled? <laughs> okay, so d- um, I digress. I died when I brought up Jaden Smith's Karate Kid, ladies. That was when I died. You did. That, was that is when you died. Clearly. Because the lesson there, folks, is this. Don't ever bring your son to work. Sorry, don't bring your kid to work. <laughs> Says the guy whose son just came to work. Exactly. Exactly right. Uh, and then, Ben, you want to just sort of recap how you died again? You you want to recap how I died for me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it was now. You died... It was, when, um, it was there the in the moment. Karate Kid? or No, you died at the end of your Adam Sandler comment, I think. Yeah, he was talking about the Adam Sandler films, and then when he was done, we didn't. Neither of us said a word, yeah. <laughs> and that destroyed him. And I think you died. Yes. You you died in one of the deleted scenes, Kev, where you had to leave for half an hour to put your baby to sleep. <laughs> oh, okay. That, I was going to say something different, but that that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of yeah. curious to hear what you were going to say, though. <laughs> totally. Okay, I'm going to tell you then. I died. <clears throat> Whilst watching this movie, <laughs> in, wait till I'm done. Wait till I'm done. I died watching this film on a tablet in the movie, in one of the cryo cells. There you frozen. go. And I watched, that was part of my sentence and my torture was to watch this movie endlessly in the cryo cell and I died because of that. And and now now you're left with an incessant need. And now you can knit a throw rug. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly <laughs> right. Thank you for putting I'm so glad you put that in there. Good good final comment. Yeah. Oh wait a minute. Can, can we do can we do something really quick? Yeah. Sure. What what do you guys think the three seashells are? Mm. Ooh. I, I'll be straight up honest with you. I couldn't figure it out then, and I can't figure it out now. I have literally no answer. I think for me, I also have no answer, but it's because I like. It's like the golden briefcase in Pulp Fiction. Like you're not supposed to know. What do you think? Okay, okay. I think it's something really. I think it's just really practical. It's it's just like some futuristic bidet. I mean. You touch the first shell, it blasts you with like soapy water. You hit the second well. Whoa. It, whoa, it blasts you with whoa. just rinse water. You hit the third one. It's air dry. So they're buttons. Right. Oh, wow. You don't actually pick the shells up. That's <laughs> fucking genius, Ben. That's genius. <laughs> I don't know if it's oh genius. My God, you just totally blew my mind. I never even considered that. Wow. That just fucking air dried my mind. <laughs> I like that. That blue warm air on my mind. Nothing, nothing better than fresh warm air on your tushy. None whatsoever. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna leave that there. I think I like it. Yeah, yeah, just right just on, just like that. Um, folks, thanks for joining us this evening on this episode of the EBD, the Blah. Everybody dies where everybody always dies at the end. <laughs> Say goodnight, boys. <laughs> Thanks, folks. I'll see you guys. See you guys later. God save the queen. Yeah, yeah. Good night. So long, folks. And that's going to wrap up this week's episode. If you want to find links to the stuff we spoke about today, you can find them in the show notes in your podcast app of choice or at the website ebd.fm forward slash 13. If you have any thoughts on the show or an idea for a topic, hit us up on Twitter at ebdpod. You can find me at Mulverine on Twitter. That's M-O-H-L-V-E-R-I-N-E. Chad is at Chad Normal on Twitter. And Ben is at Jarhego on Twitter. That's J-A-R-H-E-E-G-O. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time, folks.